Applying for a career in law feels like a never-ending series of hoops that you have to jump through, each of which are more challenging than the last. Sometimes, not only do they seem pretty challenging, but they also appear to be completely unnecessary. This is the feeling many law students have when it comes to situational judgment tests, or the SJT for short. After all, how can a few work-related situational assessments accurately reflect how you would react in real life. It just doesn't feel fair to fall at this hurdle. After spending hours crafting beautiful applications and meticulously researching the law firm, not to mention the weeks of studying you've had to do for your exams, a 20 minute assessment of how you would act in specific situations seems to be a particularly unpredictable testing strategy. However, there is good reason why law firms do use situational judgment tests when it comes to their hiring process, and there are tools and techniques that we can implement to ensure that we perform well. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth, and on this channel, we discuss the tools and strategies that law students can use to successfully navigate their law degree. So recently, a lot of law students have been asking me about why law firms even bother with the SJT. So in this video, I really wanna break down exactly why law firms are using the SJT and the sort of historical significance of the SJT too, before discussing the sort of techniques and strategies that we can implement to ensure that we perform really, really well when it comes to the test itself. A situational judgment test presents applicants with a range of different hypothetical work-related situations in an attempt to understand whether or not you align with the company's values and also to get a deeper understanding of who you are in terms of how you would prioritise tasks and how you would interact with other people. Unlike an aptitude test such as the Watson Glazer test, which is designed to understand how you think logically, the situational judgment test is about understanding your own personality and your characteristic and how your mind would fit within the whole ethos of the firm itself. But before I dive into how you can actually approach the SJT, I want to very briefly talk about its history. Work-related situational judgment testing is not a recent phenomenon. For example, in World War II, army psychologists used a variety of assessments on soldiers to better understand how they would act in different situations. These assessments involved participating in a selection of scenarios which relied on soldiers using their common sense, logical reasoning, general knowledge and past experiences to make decisions on how they should act. But this begs the question, does such testing work in an office environment? In a recent study by Chan and Schmidt in 2002, where they assessed 160 civil service employees using situational judgment tests, it was found that an SJT was an accurate predictor of overall job performance. In particular, the SJT could clearly demonstrate how the individual would perform in three performance dimensions. Task performance, so such as core technical proficiency, written and oral communication, motivational contextual performance, such as job dedication, motivation to learn, and your ability to work hard, and also interpersonal contextual performance, and that includes interpersonal facilitation, teamwork, and cooperation. In other words, the SJT allows law firms to very quickly understand who you are and the way you think without having to painstakingly interview every single applicant. To date, there is just no better way to really dive into the inner depths of your mind as an applicant. The history of the SJT then should give you a pretty good understanding of why some law firms choose to embrace it and how it helps guide their application process. Although the SJT seems like a very arbitrary testing process, there are hundreds of studies that prove that the SJT really does help understand the applicant and understand the way that they think. Many law firms receive hundreds if not thousands of applications every year and it would be impossible for them to sit down and chat with every single one of them. It is also too much of a risk to hire someone without understanding a bit more about the way you think. You see, being a lawyer isn't just about being academically gifted, but it's also about being able to interact with clients, handle difficult situations and get on with your colleagues. These additional skills are very, very difficult to test through the written application and interview process alone. Put it like this, if you were going to be hiring someone for your own law firm, you're going to want to make sure that they're not going to be a complete psychopath once they start. And conducting an SJT 
is the simplest and most efficient method of ensuring that they don't. Although I've briefly touched upon the different areas that law firms will be testing through the situational judgment test, all of these different things can be broadly categorised into two types of instruction. We've got the behavioural tendency instruction and the knowledge instruction. Behavioural tendency instructions asks how they would behave in different situations. The results of these questions tend to align with the applicant's personality constructs. An example of such a question would be one that asks you what you are most likely to do in response to a hypothetical situation. Knowledge instructions, on the other hand, asks individuals to evaluate the effectiveness of possible responses to a given situation. The results of these questions tend to align with the applicant's cognitive ability. An example of a knowledge instruction is one that asks you what is the best answer in response to a set of scenarios. Whether your situational judgment test is more knowledge-based or more behaviour based or a mix of both will depend on the specific law firm to which you're applying. If the law firm is more interested in measuring your maximal performance output, then they're probably going to be more interested in the knowledge instruction. Whereas if the law firm is more interested in the applicant's typical performance, then they're going to probably be more interested in the behavioural tendency instruction. By understanding the difference between these two different types of situational judgment tests, and also understanding a bit more about the law firm and whether they're going to be more interested in a knowledge instruction or a behavioural tendency instruction, you're going to probably find out a bit more about the sort of questions that may be asked of you from their relative SJT. So when it comes to the actual test itself, you're going to be in a position of strength compared to the other applicants because you already have a gist of what they're going to want from you. Although efforts have been made to standardise situational judgment tests for law applications, this still hasn't been done. So answering the question of how can I perform well on the SJT isn't necessarily an easy one. For example, on Clifford Chance's SJT, they give you a hypothetical situation and you're expected to give them your best choice in terms of how you would react and how you would act in that particular situation. However, other law firms will do something slightly different where they'll give you a question, whether it's written or orally, and then they will expect you to rank your particular response in order of preference. However, there are two proactive measures that you can take to succeed in the SJT. The first measure is to research the law firm's website and also to research exactly what they value and also to have a good understanding of what the culture is of that law firm and what it would be like to work there. Do they value teamwork or are they looking for someone who is more independent? Are they after someone who asks for help when they get stuck or someone who can find out the answer alone? Obviously, your approach to a question that asks how you would handle a client problem will differ depending on what the firm values most in their lawyers. The second measure is to undertake a number of mock tests to help you get a better feel of what sort of questions may be asked of you when it comes to the real thing. Most law firms will ask between 15 or 20 questions on their situational judgment test, and many also offer practice tests before you do the real thing. For example, just check out this quick practice question from Alan and Overy's SJT. I'm working on a case and I think it would be a great opportunity for you to try something new. Unfortunately, uh, there's a really tight deadline and the work would need to be completed within two days. Is that something you'd be interested in? Finally, don't overthink these tests. Just look at the situation, diagnose the issue, and just put down whatever you think would be the right course of action. You know, at the moment you're not a lawyer, and they understand, the law firms understand that you're not a lawyer yet. They're not expecting you to do exactly what a lawyer would do. All of the questions that are asked of you can be answered by drawing on your common sense and your experiences to date. So don't panic and just do your best. The SJT isn't perfect, but it's the best that many law firms have to help them understand the applicants and to ensure that they're hiring someone who is perfect for the job. So as long as you understand the company's values, you understand 
the different types of SJT questions that may be posed of you. And you also sit there and think logically about every single question. You're going to do really, really well. If you enjoyed this video, then you're probably also going to really like my studying law playlist, where I discuss a number of different areas of your law degree and how you can make the most of every single aspect. So do check that out if you're interested. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.